Hello everybody and welcome to today's video where I'm actually going to be starting a new series of videos based off of the official Unity ECS samples. So in order to get everyone familiarized with dots and ECS, Unity's put out a bunch of samples on their GitHub and I'm basically going to be going through all these samples and just kind of talking about some of the things that I've learned and showing off some of the features and best practices along the way. So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the first of those sample projects, which is centered around the entities for each function, which is a core concept of ECS. ECS, of course, stands for the Entity Component System, and this sample also demonstrates kind of that separation between entities, components, and systems. And essentially what the entities.foreach function does is we're going to use it to find a group of entities and then iterate through them and apply some certain operations onto them using a system. And if you aren't totally familiar with the idea behind dots and ECS and all that, definitely go check out the video that I made where I go over kind of these concepts on a high level. And it's just gonna give you a good overview to kind of understand what's going on here. But this is going to be a beginner focused video where I'm gonna be showing you how we can create data components and then generate authoring components out of them so we can actually edit these data components from the Unity editor. Also, I'll be showing you how we can add simple behavior to our ECS game by using a system which inherits from the new system base class. And don't worry if you don't understand what all these things mean mean right now, I think you're going to have a much better understanding of it by the end of this video. And like I mentioned, this video is going to be based off of the sample projects provided by Unity. So I'll leave a link down in the description right below the like and subscribe buttons so you can go ahead and download that and play around with it yourself. And of course, if you have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below. But without further ado, let's jump right on into the video. Okay, so here we are over in Unity for the first ECS sample. So in the Hello Cube folder, this is just number one called for each. And this is just a very simple introduction to ECS. It's basically kind of showing that separation between entities, components, and systems. So if we go into the scene here and we actually see what we have. Um, so we have this rotating cube object. And you'll see this is just kind of this main larger cube down here. And then under that, we have a child cube called child cube. Now on the rotating cube, this is where we actually contain the data components that we're going to be modifying. So you'll see here, we have a convert to entity component on here, which is basically just gonna take this standard game object and convert it into an ECS entity. And then we also have this rotation speed for each authoring script. And it's gonna allow us to modify the radians per second of how quickly the cube rotates. So if we just go ahead and hit play here, you see that the cube immediately just begins to rotate in the scene, you know, nothing too crazy. However, you may have noticed that the cube and child cube actually disappeared from our scene hierarchy here. And you'll notice if we go down to our entity debugger here, you'll see that we have a child cube and a rotating cube. Now, even though we only had the convert to entity script on the parent rotating cube, because that child cube is a child of that uh, rotating cube, it's also going to be converted to an entity as well. And even though they're kind of separated out here, there's still this um, child parent relationship because again, the rotating cube is the only object or entity rather that has that uh, rotation speed authoring script on it. And because it is rotating, the child cube is going to rotate with it. And I can just show you, it's uh, pretty simple. If we just go ahead and change this um, to like 20 radians per second, you'll see that, you know, it starts spinning like very, very quickly. And we could even, you know, go down to five and just kind of play with this value. So it's a little bit faster than originally, but a little bit slower than that 20 radians per second. Now, one thing to note, if you're not really familiar with ECS, is this rotation speed for each authoring script doesn't contain any logic on it. It's not telling the cube to rotate or anything like that. That's all handled on the system. And you'll notice that systems actually don't even need to be applied to game objects. We just have this script here, which is the uh, rotation speed system for each. And we're gonna be going into that in just a minute here. But just having that script within our assets folder is all we need to actually run the system. And if you wanna see, you can actually go down to the entity debugger here and you see we have this rotation speed system for each you can actually uncheck the box and you'll see that the cubes stop rotating. However, we can check the box back to re-enable the system 
and then the boxes continue to spin just like that. All right, so now I'm gonna dive into the code and show you how to actually create something like this and why it's a little bit more interesting than just a basic spinning cube. So this is a data component here and you'll see it's actually a public struct which it has been named rotation speed for each and it implements the I component data interface. Now, anytime we wanna use a data component, it's going to implement the I component data interface just like this. And you'll notice that even though this is a struct, this can only contain variables here we can't have any methods or any logic or anything like that um, and here we just have one public float for radians per second and if you'll remember back in unity this is that one field that we were editing and the way we can actually edit this field is by putting this tag on our struct which is the generate authoring component which basically means that we can take this script and we can apply it to a standard game object and publicly modify this radians per second variable. And then at runtime, when we run our application, it's going to create a data component with the values that we have in this authoring component. And it's going to assign that data component to the entity that it is associated with. So again, making this authoring component is going to allow us to drop this onto standard uh, mono behavior game objects like this. And then if they are converted to entities, then it will create that data component. So now to kind of demonstrate this, we can actually go to the child cube. And if we want, we can just drag another one of these uh, rotation speed for each on here. And if we want, we can even put in a value of five for radians per second. Now, if you think what's going to happen, basically the parent cube is going to be rotating and it's going to be rotating the child cube as well but the child cube is gonna be rotating even more because we've added its own rotation speed for each authoring script on it. So if we hit play, you'll see that the uh, center cube, the child cube is running quite a bit faster than the parent cube down here. So now I'm gonna show you how these cubes actually get rotated. And this all happens within this public class called the rotation speed system for each. And you'll see that it inherits from the system base class. And the system base class is available when we include the unity.entities library here. Now then, when we inherit from system base, we need to implement this method here called on update. You'll see it's a protected override void, meaning that we're overriding the default method within the system base. And this on update function is very similar to the standard mono behavior update function in which everything within here is going to update every single frame that our game is running. Now, the first thing you'll see that we do in the on update function is get a reference to uh, the delta time, which we'll just set equal to time dot delta time, of course. And the reason we do that is because we're gonna be referencing delta time uh, within this lambda expression here and we actually can't grab time dot delta time from inside here so we just store a reference to it outside here so now to actually make our cubes rotate we're going to do this lambda function here and the way we're going to do that is we're just going to say entities and they have actually separated this out onto separate lines just to make it a little easier to read uh, but we'll do entities dot with name and then within here, we're gonna pass the name of a data component, which we want to reference. And this basically means is it's gonna find all the entities that have a data component with the name of what we're passing in here. Of course, this is the name of this data component script, which we were just working on a little bit earlier. So it's basically just gonna grab all the entities that have that component. Next, we're gonna do a dot for each, and this will actually further filter out um, certain entities with certain components. Basically, we're gonna be wanting to iterate across all the entities that have in this case both a rotation component as well as a rotation speed for each component now real quickly I'm just going to jump back over to unity and show you that um, of course we have this transform component on every game object and this basically acts as an authoring component for a, a translation component a rotation component and a scale component which are ECS specific things which we can access through our ECS code here and you'll see that we have a ref for rotation and then an in for rotation speed for each and the ref and in keywords are basically going to determine whether this is a read only component or if it's available for reading and writing now you always want to do the ref components first and the ref ones are ones that are available for reading and writing. So we're gonna be doing a ref to the rotation component. And the reason we're doing that is because we're gonna be reading the current rotation value. And then we're going to be calculating a new value and then assigning that new value back to the rotation component 
so it actually rotates our cube. Now the in keyword, again, these all come after the ref ones, is a read only variable. And the reason we're setting this one to read only is just because we're only looking at the rotation speed. We're not gonna be changing the rotation speed you know, throughout our code. If for some reason we did wanna make some modifications to this rotation speed through our code, all we do here is just type in the ref keyword instead of in. So again, with this for each keyword is we're going to be iterating through all the entities that fall into the certain categories that we've specified above. And basically all that we're doing here is just a little bit of 3D math where we're setting the new rotation value equal to math.mul of essentially the current rotation value and then the axis that we want to rotate around. And then here's where we're gonna be passing in our uh, rotation speed dot radians per second and we're gonna be multiplying that by our delta time. So this is actually calculating the rotation and then we're assigning it back to the uh, original value here. Now, once this code is called, it actually doesn't get ran immediately. And you'll see that at the end, we have this dot schedule parallel. And that's because we're taking advantage of the C sharp job system. And when we say dot schedule parallel, this means that we're gonna be assigning this task to one of our worker threads. And because we're scheduling it parallel, that means that it can run in parallel with a bunch of other uh, of these cubes rotating. So to make a really simple example, let's say we have just a standard quad core CPU. So we have four CPUs available. We're gonna be having one CPU dedicated to running everything on the main thread. And then we're gonna have three CPUs available as essentially worker threads. And now if we have a bunch of um, entities in our scene that we want to rotate, we can schedule those across our three available worker CPU threads. And then those can all be be, um, calculating these values in parallel instead of all just waiting for the tasks on the main thread to finish before we can rotate all these things. So this makes it really, really performant, um, especially if a whole bunch of cubes within our scene. And so speaking of that, I'm just going to go back to our scene here and just going to go ahead and duplicate out a bunch of these cubes here. Just kind of have them all around our scene like this. And so now you'll see that when we hit play, you'll see that all the cubes start spinning um, just based on the values that they have on their individual data components. All right, so let's say we go to this last cube here and then we just go on uh, to this rotation speed and we change its uh, radians per second rotation to one. You'll see that this single cube is rotating um, quite a bit slower than the rest because we've modified the value on that particular data component. And so that is an overview of the first ECS sample project from Unity. Again, I think this does a really good job at hitting on some of the main points of ECS. Uh, things like generating authoring components and using the for each function to iterate on a group of entities are things that we're going to be using a lot as we start getting further into ECS. So it's really good to familiarize yourself with these concepts. Again, I highly recommend that you actually go ahead and download these projects from Unity and play around with them yourself to you know, really kind of grasp these concepts in your head. By the way, if you did find this video helpful, I'd really appreciate if you hit that like button and also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos on the entity component system and everything related to the data-oriented technology stack in Unity. Of course, if you have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below. But I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.